of the diary of a CEO, Stephen Bartlett and Dr. Tali Sharo delve into the science behind human behavior, emotion, and decision-making. Sharo provides insight about habituation in our everyday lives, which essentially means that we don't respond to things that don't change. For example, wonderful aspects of life, like a great relationship or a comfortable home, eventually fail to bring us the joy they used to because they've become constants in our lives. This lack of change and novelty in our routines dulls our perception of the good and the bad. This phenomenon affects not merely how we perceive our surroundings or circumstances, but also how we perceive ourselves. Shara explains that the first step towards self-improvement or adopting new behaviors is becoming aware of your existing positive traits and skills. This self-recognition enables one to build from a positive foundation rather than viewing self-improvement exclusively as rectification of negatives. In elaborating on habituation, Sharo uses the example of a color-changing image. Viewers who fixate on the image for 30 seconds will eventually see the colors fade and turn gray, essentially blending into their surroundings, which demonstrates the mind's response to unchanging stimuli. This simple experiment symbolizes how we can become habituated to both the good and bad in our lives if they remain constant, causing us to lose perception and feeling until something changes again. Cheryl highlights that habituation occurs in every living creature, explaining that such fundamental behavior affects every aspect of our lives, from our relationships to our ability to innovate. Four, to keep our lives fresh and avoid habituation. She suggests adding elements of variety, such as alternating tasks at work or trying new experiences in our daily routines. Sharo's work sheds light on the need for change and progression in our lives. She shares research that shows people feel happier when they are learning new things or making progress, regardless of the challenge and uncertainty that may come with it. This idea about the importance of variety resonates in our personal and professional lives, implying that ongoing change and progress not only stimulate our minds, but also contribute to our happiness and overall well-being. He is podcast with guest Dr. Tali Shiro. Stephen Bartlett explores how habituation impacts various domains of our lives, including our appreciation for music, our vacation experiences, our preferences for food, and our relationships. Shiro lays out fascinating examples on how familiar experiences tend to lose their charm over time. A study shows that people enjoyed a song more when there were breaks within its playback thus contradicting the general perception that a song is enjoyed more when listened to continuously. Similarly, a study in vacation experiences revealed that people enjoyed their vacation the most about 43 hours in, subsequently tapering off. This point is argued by proposing the idea of taking more frequent, shorter vacations instead of a single long one as a way to maximize enjoyment by gearing up for more first experiences. Sharo also discusses the impact of habituation on food preferences and our relationships, hinting at the idea of striking a balance between novelty and comfort. Having the same favorite dish daily might lead to a lack of preference, just as constantly being around a partner might lead to a decrease in sexual desire. Using research evidence, she reveals how people's desire for their partner increased when they were away from them. This, she says, is due to our mind's tendency to attend to things that aren't always in front of us. Shara suggests bringing variety into relationships by incorporating better choice and control in different domains and also advocates for maintaining some distance once in a while to keep relationships fresh. To make couple interactions more exciting, she recommends exploring new experiences together. However, Shara warns that this pursuit for novelty in experiences should not become overwhelming. Bartlett and Shero's conversation illustrate the power of habituation in setting the tone of our relationships, preferences, and overall enjoyment in life. It underscores the significance of balancing familiarity and novelty and tackles the challenge of maintaining that balance in different aspects of our lives. The podcast continues with Stephen Bartlett and Dr. Tali Shero discussing the concept of routine and its influence on life enjoyment. Offering an analytical balance, Shara explains that while routine provides comfort, introducing an element of novelty 
could make life more enjoyable. She points out that constantly searching for novelty could lead to mental exhaustion. So it's essential to strike a balance between novelty and routine. Taming to understand, like if there's a gender difference in habituation, Bartlett shares his personal experience, specifying that his girlfriend tends to seek out new experiences more often. Sharo, however, clarifies that there isn't necessarily a significant difference in men and women's propensity to habituate as per research. Interestingly, she observes a pattern where people with novelty seeking tendencies often pair up with those who prefer routine. This arrangement may ensure a harmonious existence by striking an optimal balance between novelty and comfort. Analyzing various psychological traits in people, Chateau covers the spectrum from pessimism to optimism and exploitation to exploration. She suggests that the wide range of traits is necessary for a society to function optimally. Okay, moving on to discussing the midlife crisis. They delve into how various stresses peak during midlife, leading to a drop in happiness. Shara posits that the decrease in learning, a sense of plateauing in professional life, and the settling into routine could contribute to this decline. Yet, she notes that there's an increase in happiness after midlife when retirement brings about significant change and possibly more variety. Dr. Shara emphasizes the detrimental effect repetition has on happiness. Even if one was to wait to the best day of their life, repeated over and over, it might eventually become depressing. Hence, it's essential to disrupt routine and introduce fresh life experiences periodically. Adding new pursuits and connections can help regain pleasure. Discussing what drives happiness, they mention a survey revealing a sense of meaning, control over life and social connections as essential happiness factors. Material accomplishments don't rank especially high. Finally, they touch on the concept of the Antiwonic treadmill, where people typically return to their baseline level of happiness following life highs and lows, shedding light on this phenomenon. Shero stresses the importance of habituation for mental health as it allows us to recover from painful experiences. She reveals that those suffering from depression exhibit slow habituation, consequently struggling to return to their baseline happiness after a negative event. Bartlett and Sharo dive deeper into the role of habituation in mental health, particularly depression. Sharo explains how depression could be connected to slower habituation or recovery from adverse incidents. People with depression tend to dwell on negative events, thus delaying their return to baseline happiness. This discussion leads to interesting observations about new experiences and our reactions to them. Cher reveals that changing routines such as starting a new job or embarking on a new relationship can be stressful initially. Humans naturally try to revert to familiarity, but giving the unfamiliar some time to set in could lead to higher levels of happiness in the long run. Going beyond the individual's experience, Bartlett pivots their conversation towards workplace dynamics. He lists five aspects that shape job satisfaction forward motion, challenge, control, and autonomy, meaning in the work and a supportive work group. Aligning with Shero's earlier notion, employees often resign within the first six months due to lack of novelty and new learning experiences. This prompts Shero to emphasize the balance between under challenge and over challenge that keeps an individual motivated. The conversation then evolves around creativity in relation to habituation. Shero cites studies suggesting slower habituators tend to be more creative. They perceive more information instead of filtering it out, allowing different bits to simmer in their mind and eventually sprout innovative ideas. Changing your environment is one simple method to facilitate, facilitate dishabituation, leading to enhanced creativity. Sharo suggests shifting workspaces or activities, which has been shown to increase creativity for the initial few minutes post-change, potentially sparking the aha moment necessary for significant ideas or solutions. Bartlett and Sharo then delve into individuals' belief systems, discussing how repeated exposure to a belief or thought makes it sound more legitimate to the human brain. This illustrious truth effect 
illustrates our propensity for accepting information we've heard multiple times as truth, regardless of its actual validity, a bias mostly unnoticed by us. Sheriff further explains that our brains don't expend as much energy processing statements plenty of times, making them seem more palatable over time. In the continuation of the discussion, Dr. Tali Sharo illuminates the cognitive dynamics that make us more likely to believe something that requires less energy to process. This concept is explored in terms of marketing strategies, such as using large and bold fonts in advertising to increase clicks and believability. She asserts that this same principle can be applied in conversation and persuasion. If you want someone to believe what you're saying, relating it to something they already believe can make it easier for them to process and accept. Striking a balance between repetition and novelty, Sharo demystifies how to effectively motivate people and influence their perceptions. She urges caution, however, as this manipulation of perception can be used to foster false beliefs if abused. For instance, repeating a full statement can make it seem true over time due to the fact that our brain prefers information that is easier to process. The conversation later shifts to the topic of dehabituation or breaking from routines for the sake of novelty and diversity. Shero discloses that while change can be stressful, it can also bring invigorating freshness that can enhance productivity creativity, and overall satisfaction in daily life. This can be as simple as learning a new skill or taking on different responsibilities at work. They discuss the importance of personal development in the workplace, emphasizing the value of providing employees with a diverse portfolio of tasks and opportunities to constantly learn something new. Even switching up mundane elements of the daily routine, like the route you cycle to work, can rewire the brain, breaking the monotony of habituation. The tantalizing effect of social media is then dissected. Dr. Sharo postulates that social media, through its portrayal of perfected lives, can lead to unrealistic expectations about our own lives. This online realm often ends up distorting what we consider normal, leading to skewed perceptions of happiness and success. She warns about the dangers of this, pointing out that higher expectations can lead to increased disappointment when reality falls short. Sharo expresses that while higher expectations can sometimes lead to negative feelings, they aren't entirely harmful. She explains that dopamine neurons in the brain quiet down when outcomes are worse than expected, correlating with a negative mood. This negativity, although uncomfortable signals to the brain that something needs to be learned or changed. In the continuation of the podcast, Stephen Bartlett and Dr. Tali Sharo dive deeper in the coupling of goal setting and instant gratification. The key, they agree, is to find a balance by rewarding yourself in the short term, even if your goal is set out in the future. This concept, encapsulated as bridging the temporal gap, allows for a smoother, more successful journey towards achieving our set objectives. An example is someone motivating themselves to go to the gym by allowing indulgence in guilty pleasures such as watching trash TV or reading certain magazines only while exercising. The conversation then evolves into the discipline equation, an intriguing concept discussed by Bartlett that asserts discipline equals the value of a goal plus the reward of pursuing it minus the cost of chasing that goal. This equation puts the emphasis on three significant aspects. Understanding the why behind your goal, enjoying the pursuit and mitigating the cost of the chase. Counterpoint was made in the form of an analogy about taking out the trash. The reward is non-existent, yet the task is completed due to the repercussions of allowing the trash to pile up. This directly contradicts the discipline equation, showing that at times consequences could push us into action. The two agree that humans are predominantly driven by incentives and that such motivators vary widely among individuals. They could range from monetary rewards to a sense of accomplishment or even variety in tasks. This is then related to how job satisfaction and employee retention are influenced by employees' perceptions of meaning in their work. The hosts contend 
that when people lose the sense of importance and value in their tasks, dissatisfaction creeps in, often leading to disengagement or even quitting. Lastly, the hosts delve into the changing attitudes among younger generations, noting that, that these individuals often express a hunger for effecting change on a macro scale. An aspiration to change the world, they argue this could be motivated by the human desire for our actions to have some lasting, meaningful impact, hinting towards a need for a sense of immortality through the influence we leave behind. Diving deeper into the conversation, Bartlett and Dr. Shara ponder about the shifting perspectives across generations. They ruminate on how the younger generation expresses an avid desire to change the world, which to many is a task of monumental proportions. However, Dr. Shara emphasizes the relativity of this phrase, changes, as per her view, can range from grandiose contributions like inventing groundbreaking technology to more humble things such as cooking a delectable meal. She reflects on how Bartlett's father desired to be a structural engineer. For him, the pursuit of engineering was perhaps his own way of changing the world, suggesting that the desire to affect change might be an innate human trait. The conversation then segues into the subject of risk, with Dr. Shero suggesting the key to dealing with risk lies in habituation. She gives the example of renowned rock climber Alex Hanold, who gradually expanded his comfort zone by continually pushing his boundaries. The hosts discuss risk habituation in different contexts, whether it's financial risk-taking, in terms of gambling or physical risk-taking, such as athletes more prone to have accidents later in their careers because they become habituated to the risks involved. The recurring theme here is that risk habituation can lead people to escalate their risky behavior, sometimes with severe consequences. The hosts also delve into the impact of long-term investments, financial or otherwise, and the possibility that people might escalate risky behavior without seeing the negative effects yet. It's often not until a significant event occurs, like a financial crash or a health scare, that they realize the consequence of their actions. In light of this, the hosts emphasize the importance of experimentation in life to realize the positive and negative aspects of habits. Before concluding, the podcast hosts delve into the impact of taking a break from social media, citing a study that demonstrated how people who quit Facebook for a month had significantly improved mental well-being and happiness. Despite this, most of the participants returned to Facebook, highlighting the addictive nature of these platforms. Despite this, most of the participants went back to Facebook after the experiment ended, underlining the potential addictive nature of these platforms. The hosts wrap up by reminding listeners of the importance of acknowledging the long-term impact of habits and behaviors. They prompt listeners to consider taking digital sabbaticals and other lifestyle experiments to consciously observe their impact on their overall well-being. They encourage a proactive approach towards improving personal happiness and self-fulfillment. The is the conversation between Bartlett and Dr. Sharo continues. Dr. Sharo suggests a simple yet profound action that could instantly improve someone's emotional state, expressing love. She implores listeners to immediately reach out to someone they care about, whether it be via email or a simple face-to-face -face communication and express their love to them. According to Dr. Sharo, this act not only generates positive emotions, in that very moment, but tends to create ripple effects that could perhaps enhance one's overall emotional well-being. Con Bartlett expressing his fascination for Dr. Sharo's impactful work, they transition towards discussing the podcast sponsor, huh, where Bartlett introduces himself as an investor. He recounts the years of arduous work and persistent brainstorming in the boardrooms of Hugh, leading to the final successful product. The complete nutrition bar, his bar strives to encompass every necessary nutrient, boasting 27 essential minerals and vitamins while maintaining a low sugar level. Despite the evident difficulty in marrying good taste and high nutritional value, Bartlett enthusiastically mentions that Hugh has achieved this balance perfectly with the complete nutrition bar, 
So much so that his team had devoured the first batch of these bars upon their arrival, leaving none to showcase for the listeners. Making light of this situation, he notes that the last bar was left ripped in the tussle over claiming the final piece. Butlet then announces a recent addition to the Hue product line that his fans seem to appreciate significantly War Breens. He happily mentions receiving a barrage of messages from fans in the UK asking for the release of Hugh Greens there and assures listeners that until that happens, they can still enjoy the newly introduced nutrition bar. In conclusion, Bartlett shows the art of podcast curation by suggesting a linked podcast episode that they believe the listeners may enjoy based on the reception and content of the current episode. He insists listeners explore this linked podcast in the episode description, emphasizing the drive to provide the audience with more thought-provoking content that satiates their thirst for knowledge even after the current episode. Check out the full podcast by clicking the link in the description below. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for listening to this podcast summary episode of The Pod Slice.